Hello, my name is Ryan Majidimer, and welcome to the July 2023 Power BI update. We've got a lot of exciting updates for you this month. If you want to see a full list of all the updates, big descriptions, links to docs, that kind of stuff, I highly recommend you check out the monthly blog. You can find a link to the blog in the description of this video. Also, before we get started, I want to point out that at the end of this video, we will have our monthly community spotlight. That's something exciting for you. I highly recommend you watch all the way through to the end of the video. Also, if that's the kind of thing you like, the Power BI community that is, I highly recommend you check out the Power BI community. You can find it at aka.mswacpbicommunity. And also, if you like community in general, or perhaps fabric products in general, you should check out the fabric community has all sorts of things like the Power BI community, as well as the Synapse and Data Factory communities. And that's all I'll say for now. But if you want to find that, you can find it at fabric community. Now, let's get started. For reporting, we have some updates to the on object interaction and preview. This month, we added some new functionality and fixed a few bugs. You can now customize the pane switcher by quickly adding new panes directly from the pane switcher without having to go to the view ribbon. You can now also open multiple panes in the pane switcher using control click. And tree map sub selections are now supported. We're going to hand it over to Roseanne for a demonstration. We're excited to bring you even more improvements this month for on object. We've now added a new plus button to quickly add new panes directly from the pane switcher. This menu also gives you a brief description of what panes are available and what their functions are. Even better, the panes added to the switcher are saved across reports. Configure once and you're done. In addition to the right click option to open a new pane, it is now even easier to open multiple panes by using control click. Now I can simply hold down the control key and click on the pane I wish to open side by side. We've also added support for the tree map visual to be able to format specific selections. Thanks, Roseanne. Moving on to modeling, we've added relationship validation to the data model editing and the service feature to mimic the functionality in Power BI Desktop. When you define the properties of your relationship, the system will automatically validate it and offer appropriate choices for cardinality and cross-filter selections. Next up is data connectivity. We have some connector updates for you this month. The Google Analytics connector has been updated to support Google Analytics Data API, Google Analytics 4. To use this new functionality, use Implementations 2.0 when connecting. The Oracle connector has been updated to enable Azure AD based single sign on functionality through the on premises data gateway. This will, will, this will require the July release of the on premises data gateway. The Azure Databricks and Databricks connectors have been updated. We've added a new DSR handler to the Databricks multi cloud and fixed a UC not enabled and catalog spark not found error in legacy code path using Databricks contents. The Denoto connector has been updated. This new version adds graphical support for the specification of native SQL queries at data source creation time. The Equus connector has a few updates. The beta attribute has been removed. You can now retrieve report content as CSV to remove the row limitation of .xlsx files. We've optimized handling of facilitating groups in the navigation tree. And you can now show report and or location folders in navigation tree, even if one, one or the other is empty. And lastly, the Anna Plan connector has been updated. This version of Power BI connector for Anna Plan includes backend changes for compatibility with ongoing Anna Plan infrastructure updates. There is no change to the user facing connector features. Moving on to updates in service, 
we are happy to announce the revamp of our datasets detail page. Now, when you click on a dataset item in the OneLake Data Hub and Workspace view, you will be directed to the redesigned page that not only enhances the look and feel, but also introduces new capabilities for an improved user experience. Additionally, we have made significant improvements to the related items list. It now showcases all the downstream and, downstream and upstream dependencies for the dataset. This enhancement allows you to easily identify the sources of that dataset, composite model relations, reports, and dashboards associated with it. In mobile, we're adding a long-awaited feature that will help dataset owners and report creators to manage their dataset directly from their phone. We'll hand it over to Michal for a demo. We are excited to announce that the Power BI mobile app now supports datasets. This long-awaited feature allows dataset owners to refresh their datasets directly from the mobile app. To access your dataset, simply go to a workspace and select Dataset Peel at the top. You will get a list of datasets that you have access to in that workspace. Tapping on a dataset will bring up a dataset info drawer, which includes the name, owner, sensitivity label, and the latest refresh status. From this pane, you can also trigger a dataset refresh directly from your mobile app. If dataset refresh is in progress, the Refresh Now button will be disabled, indicate that you don't need to trigger another one. In addition, to make sure you will never miss a bit when you are on the go, we added the support for push notifications that will be sent to you if a scheduled refresh fails. Tapping on the notification will take you directly to the dataset info drawer where you will be able to see the error and trigger the refresh again. The push notifications are sent to the same users that are receiving mail notifications. This includes the dataset owner and any other recipient that the owner defines in the dataset setting page in the Power BI online service. With this new ability, the dataset owner will be able to immediately respond to failures and unlock their users who need fresh data in the report. Thanks, Michal. Next up, in developers, check out our latest article that focuses on techniques to improve the performance of custom visuals. In this article, we discuss the performance improvements we've made in visual rendering and load times. You can find a link to the article in the blog. In the other section, you'll find that Web View 2 is now GA. Finally, we have some exciting new updates for you in the visualization section. New visuals available for you on AppSource this month include Spider Chart for Power BI by Visio Chart, HTML Content, Light, Stacked Lipstick Bar Chart, Standard, Stacked Lipstick Column Chart, Standard, 100% Stacked Column Chart with Values instead of Percent, Standard, Dual Access Scatter Chart, Standard, Category Comparison Bar Chart, Stacked Column with Percentage and Total in Label, Standard, Likert Scale Chart for Power BI by Chart Expo. Updated visuals for this month are Drill Down Map Pro and Multi Target KPI Card. And now we're here, the moment you've all been waiting for the Community Member Spotlight. Each month, we'll be selecting a community member who's gone above and beyond. And this month, it is Amit Chandak. Amit has gone way above and beyond. He is a super user. He's got an overwhelming abundance of kudos, accepted solutions, replies, posts. He's a contributor to the community blog. He's been on the Power BI community show. And above all else, he gets the overwhelming support from the community and he supports the rest of the community. And that is something that obviously is very important for us and something that we love to see. So congratulations to Amit. And if you're wondering 
who will be in the spotlight next month? Could it be you? Possibly, but if you want it to be you, you probably want to head over to aka.mswac PBI community to the Power BI community. Well, that wraps up our video for today. Tell us in the comments what your favorite feature was. And also, give us some feedback on these videos, the blog itself. I would love to hear about it. I eagerly await the feedback each month. So please keep sending feedback on these videos. I do indeed read all the comments. I love seeing all the, f whoa, 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 getting attacked by a moth here. And as exciting as that moth is, like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one.